that dirty vinyl chair really isn't comfortable. But I am comforted by the presence of Attorney Brown sitting here with me in this shabby government waiting room. My job on this particular day is to keep my parents from losing their home while simultaneously keeping my father in a nursing home where he's finally getting the care he needs, the care that my mother can't physically, mentally, emotionally, or financially provide any longer. I'm sad and I'm overwhelmed to exhaustion. But mostly I feel like a failure as the dutiful daughter. My mother is adamant that she will not sign her house over to the government to pay for the nursing home. It's, the problem isn't that my parents don't have wills. The problem is a lack of all the other organized planning and a lack of real communication. She told my brother and I that all the important documents were in the top drawer of the chest. I look and I see a jumble of yellowed papers and frayed edged envelopes and some other legal looking documents. I decide it can wait. After all, I'm the eldest. I know what's expected of me. I've always known. Like many adult children, the sandwich generation, I put on my superhuman martyr outfit and I declare, I've got this. I'll take care of mom and dad. There's no need to talk to anybody about this, especially not my brother. I've got it. Maybe you're part of the sandwich generation and you can relate to being at doctor's appointments, yours and theirs, running errands, yours and theirs, taking care of the house, yours and theirs, all while continuing to work and juggling opportunities to spend quality time with your spouse your children, your grandchildren, maybe your friends, or maybe you're a grandchild and you're watching your parents run themselves ragged and you feel ill-equipped and unsure of how to be of any real help. Regardless our age, I believe the biggest gift we can give ourselves is to plan for the end of our lives before we're in a crisis. For the past 10 plus years, I've served as a pastor for senior adults. I've served as a chaplain in the local hospital and a continuing care retirement community. I've also worked in a funeral home I'm currently a pastoral psychotherapist in private practice and the creator and consultant for The Guardian's Gift, which is a process that helps families navigate this maze of conversation and preparation. All of this is a second career for me after spending 35 plus years in the clinical laboratory industry. Now, whether you've got a full estate plan, no plan at all, or you're probably somewhere in the middle, there are several life vaults full of choices and decisions where early planning and conversation can alleviate stress and anxiety. It can provide peace of mind and it can avoid a family crisis. These vaults are interconnected. 
and the decisions and choices in one affects the possible decisions and choices in the others. In the next five minutes, I'm going to extract one small example from three of these life faults. And I'm going to show you how the master key, the two-sided master key of conversation and preparation can unlock those vaults and simply change your life. The first vault that we're going to unlock is the financial vault. Nearly 10 million Americans, adult children, and grandchildren are caring for aging parents in America. In a report by AARP, the unpaid, hold that word, unpaid cost of this caregiving is estimated to be worth $470 billion per year. Now, it's not unpaid if AARP can put a price tag on it. Now, is it? I personally spent $35,000 of my own retirement money in one year caring for my parents. Through that process, I identified 12 expensive mistakes made by senior adults and their families. Now, don't worry about trying to read this. This is just for effect. Because I'm going to give you a copy of this if you're interested later. Health care is a major expense that goes unbudgeted for on this list. Did you know that Medicare does not pay for dental, vision, hearing, and long-term nursing home care? So talking about money is always a tricky conversation. So how do you do that? Begin with a focused, simple conversation about unbudgeted expenses. Consider creating a family emergency fund. Avoid finger pointing, criticism, and statements that begin, well, you. Ask questions. Think about starting out with something like, who's going to take care of the dog and cat? Or who's going to pay the bills? Should there be an emergency stay in the hospital from a fall or some health problem. Simple conversations simply change lives. Now this is going to bring us to the health vault. People often make end-of-life decisions and emergency decisions, and they don't have that conversation with their families. They don't tell them about it. My client, Kathy, experienced this as we worked through the guardian's gift, examining her important documents and her financial situation. I set up a video conference call with her family members where she discovered the person she named as her health care power of attorney didn't want that job. At first, she was stunned. But then she was relieved because that allowed her to ask her nephew if he would be her health care power of attorney. And he lovingly and graciously accepted the job. We often avoid conversations because we feel like they're so difficult. I want you to have a copy of those 12 expensive mistakes. In your bag today, there's a card with a pen attached to it. And if you would, fill that out 
and give it to me at the break in our networking session. I will email you a copy of those expensive mistakes. I want you all to address those. I want you to begin the conversation with your family. And it can be a guide. It will save you thousands of dollars and hours of unnecessary frustration. When you have these conversations, select a time and place that's great for everybody. If there are people that don't live locally, consider having a video call. There's plenty of free apps out there. But let me suggest that you consider getting an outside person, a person outside of your family, to mediate the conversation. Because sometimes these conversations can become contentious. And later, when everybody's emotions are running high, it's really hard to remember exactly what was decided and what was said to everybody's satisfaction. So write it down. Conversation without documentation quickly becomes lost history. This is going to bring us to our third vault, the spiritual vault. For all of our scientific knowledge, we remain superstitious people. Nobody likes to talk about death and dying. They're afraid. They're afraid that if they talk about death and dying, they're going to make it happen. It doesn't matter what faith system you belong to. It doesn't matter if you have a faith system or not. I guarantee that every person has a belief about death. People tell me all the time, I'm not afraid to be dead, but I am afraid of the pain and suffering that accompanies the dying process. I was sitting with my dad one day in the nursing home, and he looked at me and clearly said, I don't think I can do this anymore, Judy. Now, there wasn't much talking in those days because of his dementia, but for a few brief moments, just for a moment, he was able to tell me about his pain. My parents kept their home. My brother and I learned how to communicate better. My dad lived out his life at the nursing home. But my biggest takeaway from all of that, it is not healthy to be the family martyr and it's not helpful for anybody else. What is that old saying? If I had known way back then what I know now, I'd do things very differently. But then we don't. Way too many families take this approach when it comes to talking about end-of-life decisions and death and dying. The week of 2018, Christmas 2018, I spent in the hospital with my dad at his bedside, and he passed away on December 26th of that year. I arrived at his casket unable to grieve I was physically exhausted and mentally, emotionally, and financially spent. I vowed that day that I would do whatever I could to help other families be better prepared than me and my family. You can avoid a crisis in life by preparing for death. Thank you.